Hey guys, I'm Jeb Brooks with greenergrass.com. Right now I'm in Perth, Australia, and uh, I'm not here much longer. You see, I'm headed from here tonight to London. I'll be on Qantas's longest flight. This is currently the third longest flight in the world. It's 787 service from here in Perth all the way to London's Heathrow Airport. So keep watching to see what it's like on this service and whether, whether I arrive as refreshed as I feel right now. Can't wait to share it with you. Let's head to the airport. Business class passengers on this flight are easily able to book a chauffeur to take them to the airport. It makes this long journey just a little bit easier. And speaking of easy, check-in could not have been simpler. Now, I arrived a good three hours before I needed to in order to check out all the amenities, including the business class lounge. Now, the international lounge was not open when I arrived, so instead I spent time in the domestic business class lounge. Now let me tell you, this was very nice, but keep watching to see the international lounge. Pretty soon it was time to head through customs. Now ours was the only flight leaving at the time, so it was pretty easy going. As far as I know, this is the, the first lounge I've been in that was built pretty much exclusively for one flight. That's Qantas 9 from here to London. There's some talk of adding flights to, for example, Paris, but for now, this lounge is exclusively for those of us traveling to London. While there was no a la carte dining, there was certainly plenty in the way of choice on the buffet. You didn't go hungry in this lounge. Back in the, uh, the business class lounge, uh, the domestic business class lounge, um, everybody was saying, all the staff members anyway, were saying that the, the international lounge was so much better that uh, I should save my enthusiasm for Qantas until I got in here. And they were right. Uh, this is spectacular. Right now I'm going to take a shower and enjoy some of the food and drinks out there because it is very nice. Much better. Once again, this lounge was very nice and the staff were incredibly helpful. It was, like that chauffeur service, just a really nice way to start such a long journey. But just like that, a quick announcement was made, boarding had begun, and we were headed to the 787 that would take us 17 hours through the air from one continent to another, all the way from Australia to the UK, and it began by walking down this jet bridge. Hello. Hi, boy. I'm good. How are you? Very well, thanks, sir. Mr. Brooks, welcome on board. Would you like to cross over and take a right? Thank you very much. You're welcome. We'll take a much closer look at the seat in just a few minutes. Business class passengers are provided with a pillow, a mattress cover, and a blanket. These are all of very high quality and really quite comfortable. This seat is designed very well. Here on the left is a sort of bin that allows for storage during the entire flight. I felt the seat was very clean and well kept because of that bin. There's of course headphones, jack, USB, a power port, as well as seat adjustments and more. Here's a small pocket for reading material and the like. I didn't use it. I did use that handle though. It was very convenient for getting in and out of the seat and it didn't bother the person sitting in front of me. It was a very nice feature of the seat. Of course, the large 787 windows that I really didn't get to take advantage of at all during the entire flight. More about that in just a little bit. Shortly after boarding, flight attendants brought around pre-departure beverages. There were choices of water, juice, or champagne. 
but only one would do for me. Such a special flight requires celebration. They also brought an amenity kit and pajamas. Very few airlines still provide these in business class. Just another reason this is a special flight. Shortly after takeoff, cards were distributed to all passengers allowing them to order breakfast. As we climb out of Perth and battle a little bit of turbulence, let's take a look inside the amenity kit. And honestly, I was kind of disappointed. I felt like for a longer flight there'd be a few more amenities. It was really just the basics. About an hour after takeoff, service began. I felt like this took a little longer than it should have, but I suppose we were in no hurry. And the food was very nice. It was nothing to write home about. The best part, though, was everything was very light. I think that's critical on a flight this long. Qantas is used to long-haul travel, so it's no surprise their in-flight entertainment is very good. There are plenty in the way of choices, and the in-flight map, which is really important on a flight like this, is very nice. The system was one of the most intuitive I've ever used. The screen was highly responsive. Now, let's take a look at the headphones that Qantas provides to business class passengers. And regular subscribers to this channel will know I have high standards for for headphones and Qantas, well, you really missed the boat. These are some of the worst I've ever experienced. Uh, they were noise canceling, but barely. I didn't use them for very long at all. One of the best parts about booking a window seat is looking out the window, even at night. Unfortunately, Qantas locked the window feature so that you could not open them during, well, the entire flight. And I understand why, because many passengers wanted to sleep and enjoy this lie flat bed, which I did too. I ended up sleeping for a good portion of the flight. So I checked out the lie flat bed and I found it to be very comfortable. The bedding was very nice. But before I headed to bed, I decided to explore the cabins a little bit more. At the very back of the plane, passengers have access to a cabinet containing various amenities. There's a similar setup at the very front of the business class cabin. This is nice for passengers who are looking for a midnight snack. The economy cabin is laid out in a 3-3-3 configuration with 32 inches of pitch. That's the distance between a position on a seat and the same place in the seat in front of it. There's a small premium economy cabin with 2-3-2 seating and 38 inches of pitch. And of course, the business class cabin where I'm sitting is laid out in a 1-2-1 configuration with a fully flat bed. There are actually two business class cabins. Another, larger one, is located in front of this smaller one where I'm sitting. But for me, it's now time for bed. After that great sleep, it was time for a quick snack. Now the flight attendants had a chicken sandwich at the ready and it was very good, but the highlight was this cup of coffee. I don't ordinarily drink coffee, but this was the best I've ever had on an airplane. Qantas really does coffee right. I was quite surprised to see the movie Airplane on an airplane, but Qantas doesn't take themselves too seriously and they made it, well, quite fun. I will say they're right. If you don't like to fly, this may not be the best movie to watch, well, on an airplane. Seventeen hours in the dark. This entire flight was at night. 
Now, I would have liked to have been able to look out the window and even just see the lights of what was going on below us. I think that would have made me feel a little better, but the flight attendants kept those windows dimmed. It didn't seem to me that that would matter that much since it was dark, and if I opened the window, it wouldn't have affected anybody, but the flight attendants disagreed. Now, I noticed this food option on the in-flight entertainment. Unfortunately, it didn't seem to work. It would have been nice to have seen whatever that was. I really liked this seat. I find everything to be very well laid out and well thought out. It's very utilitarian and practical. I can't say enough good things about the way Qantas have designed this business class seat. It's truly one of the best I've flown in, at least in recent memory. After a few more movies, it was time for breakfast. Now, if you remember, this is based on the card that I filled out right after takeoff, and it was another great meal. And finally, after some 16 hours in the air, breakfast was served, and the best part, I could undim the window and see, well, nothing. And the cabin was waking up as we were coming into London a little before five o'clock in the morning. Everyone seemed really refreshed after this flight, including me. A couple more things. Qantas provided a fast pass to get through immigration a little bit quicker. That wasn't a problem since we were the first ones on the ground. There was literally no wait in London, which was a new experience for me. Very nice. I also discovered this handset shortly before landing. Never needed it because, again, the screen was just so responsive. There's also a mirror inside this little cubby, which I guess is nice if you want to check yourself out after such a long flight. I kind of didn't. Well, that was really something. Uh, this experience has been really quite remarkable. I mean, you know, I'm a student of history, and I just think about the fact that Captain Cook's voyage took months, and I'm making the same journey between Australia and the UK in a matter of, of really just hours. That's amazing to think about. But, as with any flight, especially a long-haul flight like this one, there are four things that are most important to me as a passenger. First of all, the seat. Qantas have hit it out of the park. Uh, I think in terms of just practical, pragmatic, utilitarian, um, business class seats, I don't know that I've experienced anything better than this. Uh, second of all, service. It's a little slow to get started, uh, but uh, the, the team on this plane have been unbelievably warm and friendly and, and just fun, uh, which I think is important and, uh, and a nice feature. Uh, third of all, the food. It's been, it's been pretty good. I can't, I can't complain about it. It's certainly not uh, quite like uh, Singapore, uh, but it is, it is good. And then finally, the entertainment. There's a lot in the way of choices, which is, of course, the most important thing when on a long-haul flight. But I want to hear, what, hear from you. Let me know what you think of this service from, uh, from Perth into London. Leave me a comment and let me know. Click that thumbs up button. It sure does make a difference. If you didn't like the video, click the thumbs down button twice. I'm kidding, but do leave me feedback about what you think I can do better. Uh, I really hope you'll subscribe so you'll be among the first to hear uh, about uh, new and different trips that are coming up. There's a lot more coming to the channel. I can't wait to share it with you. But between now and then, see you in the sky. Thank you.